All right, I want to have a chat about some of these uh, fantastic Japanese hand saws. They're uh, really lovely to use. They look a bit different from your traditional Western saws and they differ in a couple of ways in the ways that you use them. The most uh, obvious and striking difference between a Japanese saw and a Western saw is the Japanese saws, all of them, they actually cut on the pull stroke, not the push stroke. What that actually means is that as you're cutting through the timber, the blade is constantly under tension from you pulling that blade and it allows the blades to be super thin and also just gives you a much, much straighter cut because all of that pressure that you're putting into the timber is actually acting to constantly straighten that blade. So you might wonder why in uh, my fantastic workshop full of wonderful loud machines, I would need to be using hand saws as often as I do. And there's a couple of answers. Uh, one is they're really nice to use. They're really sharp and it feels good to, once you have got a little bit of skill to be able to cut a perfectly straight line by hand. They're really nice and quiet. They don't blow sawdust everywhere. So if you don't have to do a whole bunch of repeated cuts, doing it by hand is often quicker. So that brings me to the second point, which is you don't have to set one of these up. If I wanted to cut uh, this, this tenon on my table saw or my router, and I just wanted to do one of them for some reason, then there's a whole bunch of setup which would definitely take me longer than it would take me to just cut it out with one of these Japanese saws. They're so sharp that it just makes this job easy and quick, certainly easier than setting up a whole bunch of um, stops and jigs on either a table saw or a router table. Now if I need to do 30 of these tenons then it's definitely worth me doing it all by machine unless I was a Japanese samurai carpenter, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be using the table saw and the, and the uh, router table. But maybe if, I, if I've forgotten one and I need to come back and do a single one, it's gonna be so much quicker for me to do it by hand. So the other uh, really obvious reason is that compared to a large machine, these are actually uh, really affordable and you can do so much with these. If you get good and quick at using a uh, a Japanese hand saw and some nice chisels, you can do your work anywhere. You can uh, cordon off in a little, a little position in the lounge room if you want to, do really nice work. You don't need a, a whole bunch of dust extraction and so forth and you're not going to be annoying your, uh, your neighbours or your housemates or whoever else has to live with all of the noise that you make. So they're really lovely to use, it's a really nice tactile way to work and compared to using um, western style saws, which obviously still have their place, these guys just provide a really nice clean cut that is super fine and I find them really enjoyable to use for that reason. So the first one I'll talk about is called a Royoba. Now again, I'm not sure if that pronunciation is exactly correct, but people know what you're talking about. And this is actually a double edged uh, saw. So it has the one set of teeth which is designed specifically for rip cutting and a much finer set of teeth which is designed specifically for cross cutting. Another interesting feature of these saws is while the blades are really thin, they actually get even thinner towards the centre. They've been ground slightly thinner in the centre than on the edge, which just pre um, prevents that saw blade from grabbing in the timber when you're making long rip cuts. These blades are completely replaceable, so in a year or a couple of years, after, if you've made them blunt through a lot of use, you can take them off, get some new blades, put them on the handles, and these handles will last you for your lifetime if you treat them well. The next saw we want to look at is called a kabata. Now these only have a, their teeth on one side of the blade. They're actually, and they have no spine on the back, which means that you can do uh, through cuts or um, cross cuts where you have to actually pass the whole saw blade through the timber because there's no spine there that's going to get in the way. Because they don't have a spine, the blade is a little bit thicker than some of the other um, saws that we're going to look at and that just means that they have a bit more strength to keep nice and straight. You can get these in uh, different teeth patterns. You can even get these to do uh, rip cuts if you wanted a single sided rip cutting blade. This one is very fine and designed for very fine cross cutting work. Also interesting to note that these blades are also narrower on the back than they are at the teeth and that's again to prevent binding in the timber. The last of these saws that we're going to look at is a, a more traditional tenon saw. It's actually called a dozuki and you'll notice that it has this big strengthening spine along the back. Now these, the blades on these are actually super fine. It almost feels like, I don't know, aluminium flashing or some tin foil. It's about 0.3 of a millimetre thick, but it's a super hardened steel 
and again because we're pulling that through the timber the tension on the blade is what provides the stiffness required to make those cuts. Now this one has I think about 25 teeth um, per inch so it's incredibly fine and you'd use this for doing really fine tenon work, maybe some dovetails, anything where you don't have to cut long distances but you need a super fine cut that's deadly accurate and that's what these are for. And of course on all of these you can actually replace the blades and that's what makes them, um, well they're very affordable to begin with but it makes them really affordable in the long run as well. Replacing blades on these guys is dead easy. Uh, you just undo this little screw here, give it a couple of turns and then this whole thing comes out and that blade can be removed and you can see how thin it is. It's just, you know, just nothing but really nice and strong. Now, when you do replace these blades, uh, I have seen people actually grinding the teeth off and you can use them as a scraper blade uh, because the steel is so good, it'll last you a long time. Replacing the blades on the others is pretty much the same. It's a little bit different on the Royoba because you've got a little um, screw there that you have to undo with a, a screwdriver, but it's really not tricky. These Royoba um, Japanese saws are really the more general purpose saw that uh, in the, in the Japanese range. Um, because you've got the option of the two different cutting types, you've got the uh, rip cutting teeth and the cross cutting teeth, it makes it super handy. In general, these would be used for um, quicker, rougher cuts than some of the other saws. You could pick these up and rip through a four x two in no time at all. And you can actually do genuinely long ripping cuts with that blade, it's incredibly effective. Um, it does take some practice to get that really nice and smooth, but if you're in a situation where you couldn't be using your table saw or perhaps you couldn't get a power tool in to the piece that you needed to cut, you can do a very effective ripping cut with this blade. So when you are using one of these to do a ripping cut, I found that they work much better if you're actually cutting with the grain than trying to push, sorry, than rather trying to pull those teeth up against the grain as in lifting the grain up. Um, you'll get a real feel for that once you give it a shot. Do a couple of test cuts before you have to cut some fancy piece of timber. But these ripping cuts ideally would be then smoothed out with a hand plane in, a, in traditional work. You're not gonna be relying on the finish of um, whatever that ripping cut is that you've completed to be the finished edge of your work. Same as any of your other saws really. I'll just draw, draw a really quick diagram to show what I mean about that grain to make that a little bit clearer. You can imagine your block of timber as actually a whole bunch of layers of grain. And if you're pulling your teeth down through that grain, it's actually going to be shaving long bits of those layers off. Whereas if you are trying to pull the teeth up through that grain, coming the other direction, you're constantly going to be lifting those layers out and it's going to be much harder to saw and it's going to be a much rougher cut. So when you are doing a cross cut um, with one of these Japanese saws and this applies to uh, the Royoba or any of the others, you actually want to be starting with the handle down rather than the handle up like you would with a western saw and the reason for that is when you've got the handle down, you're pulling those teeth into that grain and it just helps with the straightness of the cut by providing that tension that we're looking for. Um, so, you basically want to do long straight cuts, hold the uh, saw as far away from the blade as you can. You can hold it with one hand or two, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I usually start with one so I can guide the blade through that initial cut and then I change over to two hands. Um, there's plenty of people who will have a different way to do it and it'll just depend on what you find most comfortable. So super quick, 
you don't have to put much pressure down on the saw at all. The weight of it and the weight of your arms is gonna be more than enough with these really sharp blades. So that's a really nice smooth face given that we're using a fairly uh, rough cross cutting saw for this purpose, but it's right on the line, super smooth and just so easy to use. So to take some of the guesswork out of buying these um, Japanese saws, uh, Timbercon sells this um, Gyokucho brand, which are absolutely fantastic. You'll see craftsmen from all over the world using these, uh, the Gyokucho razor saw. So uh, Timbercon has thrown three of these together in a set. You've got your Royoba, your Dozuki, and your Kabata together, and so you can buy all three uh, without having to, you know, go and choose individual saws. It just makes it a little bit simpler. Um, they put together two sets, one of them is really general purpose work and you still have all three of those saw types and then they also have a set which each of those saws has slightly finer teeth and that's for finer dovetails, really fine tenoning work um, and so you have your general purpose set and then a set for slightly finer work and both of those sets have three saws each to give you that full versatility of the um, Japanese saw range. Uh, you can pick these up at, uh, on their website, actually, at timbercon.com.au or in any of their stores in Perth and in Melbourne.